Hi, today I have another population genetics video for you. And here is a problem. Calculate the effective population size for a breeding population of 60 adult males and 40 adult females. And before I will explain how to solve this problem, I want to explain what is the effective population size and how it's different from the census population size. So imagine that we have a group of uh, individuals, uh, say people, that would be different at one locus. They would have one gene represented with uh, two forms or two alleles. One would be capital A, another one would be small a. And of course, uh, when we have two alleles, we may have different variants of these two alleles. So we also may have genotypes that is homozygous dominant and uh, homozygous recessive. So let me write down these different variants that can make uh, different frequencies. So this can be heterozygous and homozygous uh, dominant and uh, homozygous recessive. So all these uh, people here we will uh, circle and we would call them uh, gene pool. So let me uh, circle each individual so you would know that this uh, each genotype represent uh, one individual. And we call such a gene pool um, census population so we use N C but not all the uh, people in this group would be able to breed for example some would make uh, some would have uh, some problems with their reproductive uh, uh, organs so they wouldn't be breed and uh, some of them may be uh, homosexual so they also wouldn't uh, produce progeny and some of them can be too old to uh, breed so as you see uh, from the total number we may have only be left with uh, some uh, numbers of course, I exaggerate here. Uh, the number is not like 50 to 50, but uh, I just use this uh, for as example. As you see, this would be effective population size. We could effective population, that population that uh, would produce uh, gametes. And uh, we call this uh, effective population. So we use E, N, E. As you see, uh, all these uh, individuals may donate uh, their gametes for the next generation. For example, this individual would produce only one type of gametes, that is small a. And this one uh, can produce uh, capital A and small a. And this one would produce capital A and this one would donate only small a uh, alleles so as you see the frequency uh, can be different from uh, all the from the total number uh, of this population because we only uh, count only those representative uh, that can produce uh, gametes and would breed. So as you see the next uh, generation here uh, frequency of these alleles can be different from what we have uh, here because uh, we only count only uh, gametes produced by this effective uh, population that is here. So before I will uh, move 
to my uh, second uh, part of explanation. I, I want to tell you Russian anecdote. I hope you would uh, understand the humor and this would uh, help us to understand uh, the balances between sexes. So here is the anecdote. One geologist who spent uh, about a month in the forest at last came out of the forest and he saw uh, some village and he came to the nearest house and knocked the door. And young uh, beautiful lady opened the door and he asked her if she would be so kind to let him in to sleep over one night. But she was hesitating and she said, oh really I don't know, uh, I am here alone and um, I don't know how uh, I would be with a man. But he said, oh, don't worry about that, I am a gentleman. So she let him in and he spent a night and when he woke up early in the morning, he came to the porch and he saw uh, that young lady feeding her birds and he had a question and he said, um, why do you have... Um, five hens and five roosters and she said oh you know there is only one cock here the rest are gentlemen so uh, this is really a uh, very good example uh, that uh, explains the um, balances between sexes for example uh, when we talk about this effective population we also have to uh, make a correlation uh, between the balances of the sexes. For example, we have one, two, three, four, five, and uh, six uh, representatives here. And imagine that uh, only one would be female and uh, the rest five would be male. Uh, human female can produce about uh, ten uh, children during her life span. So even uh, if uh, here would be five males, uh, this female would be limited factor. So such a group would produce only uh, during the lifespan only about 10 children. And uh, let's uh, think about a different picture when we have uh, one uh, male and five females. So such group of people during the lifespan can produce uh, 50 children. So as you see um, the balances between sexes is also very important. So our problem here is about the balance uh, that might influence the effective population size and how effective uh, uh, this would be uh, what is the what the effect this would uh, produce on this uh, uh, gamut pool of the next generation and here's a formula so n e that stands for the uh, effective population size equal to four n m and M stands here for the male multiplied by N F and F here stands for the female and divided by uh, N M plus N F so according to this formula N E equal to 4 multiplied by 60 60 males and multiplied by 40 females and all this divided by 60 plus 40 and the answer here would be 96 so this is going to be our answer today so uh, the balances between sexes also influence uh, gene pool and uh, influence effective population size. So this would be, this uh, whole formula would be a correlation between uh, sexes. So balance between sexes might influence um, allele 
frequencies, uh, allelic frequencies in the next generation. So here is the answer. I hope this video will be informative for you and now you understand better what is the effective population size and the balances between sexes. This is all for today. Thank you for attention. Goodbye.